and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Katherine Cavanaugh, and I will be acting as moderator for today's webinar, From Darkness to Light, Honoring Success and Resilience at the Summer Solstice, which is a production of the National Healthcare for the Homeless Council with support from the Health Resources and Services Administration, Office of National Assistance and Special Populations. This session is being recorded. This is a one-hour presentation with the last 10 minutes reserved for questions and answers. Below the presentation slide, there is a chat box for participant questions and technical issues. Please type your questions or technical issues into the chat box at any time during the presentation. A selected number of questions will be answered at the end of this presentation during the Q&A session. If you are having technical issues, you can also contact the Council's office at 615-226-2292 and speak with Caroline Gumpenberger. The PowerPoint presentation and recording of this webinar will be posted on our site www.nhchc.org within three days. During this webinar, you will hear from Jeff Foreman, the Policy Director, and Natalie Interiano, Policy Associate from Care for the Homeless. That is a healthcare for the homeless clinic in New York that developed the idea of the Summer Solstice Success Celebration. You will also hear from David Peary from Camillus Health Concern in Miami, and me, Catherine Kavanaugh, uh, from the National Healthcare for the Homeless Council uh, based out of Baltimore. The two of us will share our experiences hosting uh, summer solstice celebrations in the last couple of years. During this webinar, we will explain the origins and the purpose of the summer solstice success celebration, uh, giving examples from uh, New York, Miami, and Baltimore and how our events are put together and the purpose of these different events. We will also provide some tips and some lessons learned from us, the organizers of the event. Um, for people who are looking to bring these celebrations to your community in the future. Uh, before we get started on this webinar, we want to get a little bit of sense of who's in this room. Uh, so we're going to bring up a poll question to find out uh, what is your role at the Healthcare for the Homeless Center, um, and if you've ever heard of the Summer Solstice Success Celebration before today. So this time, if you see on your screen, there's a poll if you want to fill out that poll, and we'll give people a, about 30 seconds to kind of fill out and see who's in the room so we can get a sense of what's going on. Okay, it looks like uh, we're about done, so we'll wrap up here on the, broad, on the results. Um, it looks like there's a, a lot of other uh, folks here, so we welcome you to the Healthcare for the Homeless community. We hope you uh, enjoy this webinar. Um, and then it looks like we're about split, 50-50 uh, people who have heard of the event. So that is exciting to hear that word is getting around on the summer solstice success celebration. And I will begin this webinar by uh, handing it off to Jeff Foreman and Natalie Interiano from New York City to talk about their event in New York and how they developed the idea of the Summer Solstice Success Celebration. Thanks, Catherine. And thanks to the National Health Care for the Homeless Council for having this Summer Solstice Success Celebration event webinar and to everybody for participating. It was four years ago when New York City's Care for the Homeless launched the first Summer Solstice Success Celebration event. At the time, we were really involved in researching and addressing the problem of stigmatization of people experiencing homelessness in New York City and of finding ways to provide dignity to our clients and thinking about how to frame and message about homelessness and poverty in ways that supported uh, our advocacy program and better allowed people to recognize that we can end homelessness as we know it. 
Uh, as part of the destigmatization campaign, we were working to humanize and put an individual face on New York City's homelessness crisis. We were messaging about our clients' amazing success in overcoming um, incredible obstacles, especially having our clients tell their own unique real-life stories of success, stories that really present them as accomplished individuals, and emphasizing how, as a community, we can end homelessness. At about the same time, our Care for the Homeless Board of Directors Policy Committee suggested that we create a program that would play off what was becoming a pretty well-established winter solstice uh, homeless persons Memorial Day program. It was a program that was beginning to develop a following of its own and beginning to draw significant news media attention. Because the Memorial Day program was pegged to um, the longest, darkest night of the year and observed a memorial for unhoused people who died in our community that year, as well as serving as an opportunity for public education about the tragic health impacts of homelessness and that we could end that tragedy by ending homelessness. Uh, it was natural, a natural progression for us to think about the longest, brightest day of the year, the summer solstice, as the day to celebrate success and achievement. Our first summer solstice success celebration had a number of features and activities celebrating success over obstacles, which we build on over the years. And you'll be hearing uh, more about that in just a moment. That first celebration in 2014 included honoring and presenting awards to clients who had overcome homelessness by obtaining and maintaining their own stable housing. Our second success celebration added awards for clients nominated by Care for the Homeless clinicians for exceptional achievements in overcoming major health care obstacles. The awards were presented by the nominating clinician or provider to the patient being honored, and our agency's chief medical officer then presented an award to each of the clinicians who had made a nomination. And I, I can only say I, I really can't adequately describe how moving it is to hear the patients and caregivers uh, talk about this situation and each other and see them embrace. Uh, it's, really, it's really quite an emotional experience. Last year, we added an Advocacy Achievement Award, giving us the opportunity to honor a client leader doing extraordinary advocacy work. In addition to our goal, of telling individual stories of achievement, destigmatizing people, and promoting our message about overcoming and ending homelessness, our summer solstice success celebration has become a moving and dramatic experience for everybody involved, as equally as uh, moving as the Homeless Persons Memorial Day program is. Our hope is that the summer solstice success celebration will become well established across the United States to promote the real life individual stories of success that people experiencing homelessness achieve despite really incredible obstacles, and to provide a destigmatizing message about people who struggle to overcome poverty and homelessness. Thank you. And now I'll turn the webinar over to my colleague, Natalie Interiano. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so I'm just going to go over a little bit the format that we have here in New York City. Um, these are just a few pictures of our event. So our format is uh, we, provide, we provide a meal for the attendees. This is usually done about an hour before the program. And in various locations, we've had sort of a, a different arrangement for it. Uh, last year, we had most of well, the meal. Most of it was donated. We have volunteers who actually serve the meal. Um, and then the actual program is an hour. So we do an hour before for the meal and then an hour for the program, which includes the awards, any of the remarks, any of the music. So overall, the program is about two hours. In, in our event, we involve clients, we, we involve providers, and we involve uh, staff as well. 
Uh, this is an opportunity to get everyone involved in the organization uh, to be part of the celebration. It really goes a long way in making our clients feel like we do, um, we value their participation in the actual event. We also, in New York City at least, uh, we invite elected officials to participate in the program. And you might want to get them involved for several reasons. Um, it really means a great deal to the clients to have elected officials present. It, it, it works to create a relationship with the elected officials and it makes them familiar with the work that you do. And it's also a draw for media coverage, which we'll go over in a little bit. So as, as Jeff mentioned, our housing awards, we have a few different awards. So the housing award celebrates any client that's been able to receive and maintain housing. We have the Healthcare Success Award. Uh, since we, we are an organization that provides healthcare to people experiencing homelessness, we celebrate health, the health successes of our clients. We also have an Advocacy Award, which is presented to one of our CAP members that has done an exceptional job of participating in advocacy activities throughout the year. Uh, and this was new in last year, new in 2016. And then we also have a writing contest. Um, the writing contest winner is submitted prior to the event for review and award recipient selection. So what we say is we're looking for stories about su success in overcoming health challenges and finding and maintaining stable housing or in advocating for better policies to fight, prevent, or end homelessness. Participants may also submit an essay about what the writer thinks success would look and feel like. Uh, so it's a really good opportunity to get a lot of the clients involved in telling their story. And then when they come up, uh, they receive an award, perhaps read an excerpt, and then we give them a small gift. This is just um, it's some of the flyers that we use. So the one to the left is our actual event flyer, and the one to the right is the Story of Success Writing Contest flyer. Uh, we're happy to share these with anyone that uh, would maybe want a template for their own events, but just wanted to give you an idea of what ours look like. So some of the components for the actual event, um, and in the next picture you'll see what this looks like, but we do a wall of, su of success. Uh, this wall of, su of success is, as you see the lady right there on the right, we have a piece of paper that's about that size, and what we ask is, my, my success story is, it usually says my success story is, because since we involve so many different kinds of awards now, healthcare, housing, you know, your own success, advocate success, so we say my health success is. Uh, this wall encourages those in attendance to display their own success story. Um, it, it really is a great opportunity. We usually have it up right before the event, so while people are eating, they're mingling, walking around, they can come and share their own story, uh, take a picture with the wall, talk to each other. It's, it's really a great a great component. Uh, we, us we usually have, we always have musical entertainment. This is a really good opportunity to get a lot of the clients involved. So this last year we had our uh, Consumer Advisory Board uh, member, he is part of a band. So he was able to bring his band members. Um, we had a couple of songs throughout the actual program and it, it went a long way in sort of keeping um, the spirit of success uh, going. And then we also have we, we take this opportunity to table, so we have a lot of our, and we have this up also before the event starts, so a lot of our policy and advocacy materials on display. One, to be able to educate the participants in the kind of work that we're doing, um, being able to educate them in the policies that are affecting homelessness. And then we also have voter registration, which is a very big component of what we do as well. And anything else that you, if you want to sign people up, say, for any kind of network that you have, uh, this is a really good opportunity for that. And then we also have, uh, these are all volunteers, but we do have a photographer. It's usually someone from our organization or we get a volunteer to do this. So we usually have two people in order to get some of the best pictures. And then this last year we had a videographer, which was really great. And the video actually will come up in a little bit. Um, but he was able to do a lot of work before the actual event and at the event to be able to produce about a six minute video about, our, about the actual summer solstice celebration. Um, and I'll, I'll, we'll have that link in a little bit. And then as I mentioned, a lot of the work that we do, uh, it's really guided by the volunteers that are helping us. So a lot of the setup, uh, we do setup, uh, cleanup, we do volunteers who help us with the actual serving of the meal. Um, again, this is a really major component of having a very successful event. And then these are just a couple of pictures of what, of what the event looks like, uh, what the meal looks like. We have the band there, the success, the wall of success is right there on the right. And then we also provided you a link to the video that I just mentioned, which is the winter, the summer solstice success celebration. Um, you know, take a look that you can see what the event looks like. Um, 
and you can help spread the word. So now I'm going to pass it on to David Peary from Miami from Camila's Health Concern. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you to the National Healthcare for the Homeless Council for allowing us to um, discuss and present what Miami is doing with the summer solstice celebration. Um, Camilla's Health Concern is a healthcare for the homeless clinic located near downtown Miami, and we have an affiliated homeless shelter about a mile north of us. The pictures you see here is a picture of one of our CAB meetings, and I'm a um, CAB board member. And this is actually taken at our affiliated homeless shelter. And this room that you see here is actually uh, reconfigured to hold our summer solstice celebration. So I'm going to spend a few minutes discussing what we did. And our model is a little bit different than New York's for basic um, um, cultural reasons um, down here in Miami. When we first came up, when I first broached the idea, of doing a summer solstice event that was based upon the tremendous feedback, positive feedback and excitement that we got um, from talking about New York's event. The whole idea of having an event celebrating individual consumer success was uniformly greeted positively among um, everybody that, that I presented this to. However, when we talked about actually implementing it based upon um, um, some of the uh, things that New York was doing. Um, several folks came up and expressed concern about the actual stigmatization of homelessness, that because here in Miami, folks are probably a little more sensitive to displaying their homelessness in public, even when they've achieved um, housing success. And again, I think this is because of cultural issues. So we decided to do things just a little bit differently. Um, instead of broadly engaging the community and, and engaging um, uh, the um, politicians and the like, like New York is laudably doing, and we really wanted to do that, we decided to focus more internally on um, and, and engage the folks simply within our shelter. Our shelter houses about 400 individuals in various permanent, transitional, and emergency housing. And we also have another 250 or 300 individuals that participate in a day program. What we wanted to do was focus on role models and focus on hope. We wanted to make sure that our event maintained, uh, was always consumer driven and focused. And we specifically did not want this to focus on institutional fundraising. We want to make sure that the consumers had sufficient and priority seating within that room. The room only housed about 120, 130 or so seats. And um, it was actually standing room only when we held our event. So the way that we eventually settled on doing this is to have a skit. The skit showed the transition, one individual's transition from homelessness to house. He started off by walking up to the podium with cardboard in hand, laid it down as if he was on a city street, and went to sleep. He was eventually approached by another performer acting as a social worker, outreach worker from our shelter, who engaged him and eventually convinced him to go into the shelter, convinced him to achieve um, transitional and eventually permanent housing. Now, throughout the skit, at various points were interruptions for singing, dancing, and spoken word poetry. A very important part of the whole program was that we populated the room with artwork, artwork that was actually created by our consumers from our fairly vibrant arts program. So we had actually several dozen pieces of artwork direct that were posted throughout the room. We also used artwork, which I'll talk about in just a moment, for the flyers and for the, for the actual program that was used within the summer solstice performance. Uh, now, a very important part of the whole performance also was the finale. In both years that we've done this, we started this in 2015, and we also did it in 2016, the finale was incredibly emotional. 
the part where the individual finally achieves housing and we engage the audience in a joint group song in 2015 and a finale in which individuals were invited to come up and talk about their individual success in 2016 was incredibly emotional. And I'll get to that in just a moment. So this is an example of our first program in 2015, our first flyer, summer solstice celebration from our darkest day to our from our darkest day to our brightest day. The artwork here is actually created by an individual who was homeless at the time, was painted on cardboard, on the cardboard that he was actually sleeping on. And it depicts, as you can see, a individual who is being held down by hands in a slave ship who is actually reaching up to an eagle that's flying away. But it's actually a very symbolic piece of art and a very vibrant one that we posted within the room itself. Here's another um, example of a flyer from the 2016 um, celebration, um, summer solstice celebration, the longest night to the brightest day. If you look in the um, upper left-hand corner, that's actually a very large piece of art there. That's a um, artwork that was created during a group art therapy program where about 15 individuals who are participating in art therapy um, put paint on their hands and created this sunburst type of a motif. And they wrote, and I don't know if you can actually see it on your particular screen slide, but they wrote uh, words within their hands like hope, faith, resilience, and, and things like that. And it's actually a very compelling piece of art. This was also posted within the room, too. And I can tell you that folks that saw that, um, it, it had a very significant impact on them. So here's some pictures of our celebration. Um, these are all taken from the one in uh, 2015. And um, this is actually towards the um, end of the uh, performance. Um, on the lower left-hand corner, the individual that's kneeling with the um, black shirt, this is towards the end of the time that, that he is actually achieving housing. And the um, two women on the sides of him in the gold and the white are, are angels that are kind of blessing him here. And then when you look in the upper left-hand corner, he's actually achieved housing and his shirt has turned to white. He's now got a rose in his hand. And the chorus in the background is singing. Um, the um, woman dancing in the upper left-hand corner, this was actually taken at a point earlier within the performance. Um, as I said, there are various times during a during a skit when uh, folks would um, dance or, or sing or, or do spoken word on poetry. In the lower right-hand corner, this was a very significant part of the event. This individual you see singing here started singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Uh, many of you may be familiar with that particular um, song. It's sung in a lot of um, churches and elementary schools and the like. The whole audience is very familiar with it. He started singing it one by one. The folks in the back joined him and started singing it until the whole, until the, all the performers were singing. At that point, every woman in the audience, I can tell you, all 100 plus individuals um, were also um, um, singing it. And you can actually see tears. People were actually crying in the audience as they're talking about this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Um, also, I neglected to say, at that point, we had turned down the lights in the room. We had handed out these little electric candles to everybody. And at the point that the guy in white started singing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, we asked everyone to go ahead and turn on their candles and shine their light. And so that's how we got the audience engaged. I'd also like to uh, mention that in the 2016 presentation, we actually did things a little bit different. At the finale, we asked folks to come up to the podium, to the speaker, and take just two or three minutes and 
either describe some event in their life that was a particularly significant success story or talk about somebody who encouraged them to let their individual light shine. So we handed them a candle, they came up to the um, podium, and they talked about success. That was really emotional for a lot of people, especially the folks that are talking about um, individuals who are really, really significant within their life. Now this slide here in the upper left-hand corner shows some of the artwork that populates the room. Being here in South Florida, you can see that someone um, drew a Cuban flag, which is um, very appropriate to, to a lot of or significant to a lot of folks down here. Um, there's something very interesting that I found about folks that who are homeless or formerly homeless who create art. There's a story behind each piece of art that they create. It seems to be different. You know, they're they're putting their experiences, their emotions their understandings and their beliefs into their art. And so you can really see it manifest itself through, um, through the actual artwork. So I highly encourage folks you know, that are considering doing this type of celebration to look at artwork created by either participants, homeless or formerly homeless individuals. In the lower right-hand corner, this is after the event. If you see in the background there, um, the folks that are handing out ice cream sundaes are actually the CEO and the CFO and the executive leadership of our shelter. So they are serving everyone that was um, participants and also the um, audience. And they're serving everybody ice cream sundaes. And so that was a really, really nice fitting in to that particular performance. So just take a moment here to talk about the impact of the event. Just as um, Jeff and Natalie mentioned, this event was surprisingly and I guess appropriately highly emotional. The, um, e the impact on the performers was palpable and tangible. The performers talked about their performance for at least a month afterwards. It was a, a very significant increase on their own individual self-esteem. You've got to understand that all these performers were either homeless themselves or formerly homeless. They had a very positive feeling of giving back, of being a positive role model, and the opportunity to share their art was truly, truly, truly significant for the folks who were artists within the, um, within the young performers. The impact on the audience was equally significant as well. Folks talked about this, as I said, for weeks afterwards. I think that it did impact a very tangible, positive belief that we can rise above our current challenges, that others also have overcome homelessness. We really put on a very enjoyable event on both years. They had a very extremely uplifting ending. And as I said, the 2016 um, version of it where we engaged the audience, where we had individuals come up, take a candle, talk about that special light in their lives, that was a truly significant portion of 2016. I can tell you that, that um, anybody that decides to do this, you're going to be faced with a lot of strong, positive emotions when you do this. So I highly, highly encourage everyone to consider putting on a positive event. So I thank you for um, letting me talk about the uh, Miami version of the Summer Solstice event. I'm going to turn this back over to Catherine. Thank you, David. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm Catherine Cavanaugh. I work for the National Healthcare for the Homeless Council, but I'm actually based out of the Baltimore Healthcare for the Homeless site. And when we heard about what Care for the Homeless was doing in New York around the Summer Solstice Success Celebration, it was an idea that we thought uh, was wonderful and really honoring those who have overcome homelessness while also affirming that we know how to end homelessness for everyone and that we can do it with the resources and the political will. So we, we wanted to get on board in celebrating this event um, ensuring that we uh, acknowledge that homelessness is not permanent, 
it's not something that defines who a person is. People are more than the, their experiences of homelessness and really enabling people to define success for themselves and how they want to be perceived by the world and not by any stigma or stereotypes or generalizations that people have about people experiencing homelessness. So when we started thinking about doing this event, we talked to some of our uh, coalition partners. We're in a coalition called SHARP. It is Stop Homelessness and Reduce Poverty. Uh, and there was about five other service providers who were involved in that coalition that were interested in participating in this event. So we continued to meet with those individuals about what this event was and what it could be and how we really wanted to honor the idea that we want to acknowledge people who were able to break out of their experience of homelessness while also acknowledging that there are a ton of systemic barriers that prevent people from overcoming their experience of homelessness and we want to honor those who are able to really surmount those hurdles, but also on a broader scale acknowledge that some of these barriers uh, are too insurmountable for a lot of people. And we, we can reduce those barriers and eliminate those barriers if we wanted to. So when we started talking with our different community partners, we really wanted to do this as a storytelling project. We wanted to get people with the direct experience of homelessness able to really share what their experiences of homelessness was like, what were the services and supports they needed to achieve in order to maintain their housing, and why these services and supports are not more broadly available, and how we could ensure that they were available to end homelessness on the scale that we need to see to ensure that no one else spends another night outside. So when we talked about that, we talked to our local speakers bureau. That is a, a group of folks here in Baltimore City that have the direct experience of homelessness. They have some training in how to effectively tell their story and how to tell their story in a way that connects their experience of homelessness to broader social and economic and political reasons behind the experience of homelessness. So the Speakers Bureau then uh, agreed to help kind of train and have some community meetings and some focus groups with our service providers and various clients at those five community partners that we had. The store, we held about um, probably about 10 different of these events where the Speakers Bureau helped train people in how to tell their stories. People were able to practice it in small groups and before the event through their training with the Speakers Bureau. And then on the day of the event, they were, we had a list of a number of different people who wanted to tell their stories about uh, how the organizations, what services and supports helped them uh, main, achieve housing and maintain their housing and then push for these services to be available on a broader scale. Uh, we also were able to get some music and food at the event. Um, if you see on the picture here, uh, the top right picture has Femi the dry fish. I should give him a shout out. He is a ally of ours here in Baltimore who does a number of events uh, for our community. He's a great supporter of ours and performs some of his wonderful art and music for everyone and then the food was donated. So we were planning this uh, wonderful kind of community event that was really based in storytelling, music, and food throughout a few hours, and it was very exciting. Um, and then I will have to tell you that we planned this outside um, without any backup plan. Uh, so unfortunately, about 10 minutes into our event, uh, after there was some storytelling, we, it started pouring rain. Uh, so we were not able to complete our event. But I will say that people enjoyed it while they were there. Um, Femi stayed out and played his music, um, trying to see if the, the weather would cooperate. Um, but it was a good lesson for us in the idea that we planned an event, people were really, really ramped up about it, and it was really the spirit of organizing it, the spirit of what this event meant. We saw it in people, and it's not about the event itself all of the time. Sometimes it's about the community that is built through the organizing process. And we're hoping to continue that success in that community in the future. Uh, in order to reframe um, the event, because I think part of what we talk about here is how we're framing homelessness, how that is often um, mischaracterized in society. <coughs> we, 
we wanted to get behind this idea that weather is unpredictable, but housing shouldn't be. So that was our messaging from this event and our experiences with the summer solstice. But that was year one for us, and we are looking forward to continuing to plan these events in the future uh, because of our connections with the Speakers Bureau and, and other community groups. Uh, we plan to incorporate storytelling into the future, and then uh, music and food, as people have said on this call so far, are always great community builders. Uh, so right now, I'm, I'm going to hand it back to our Care for the Homeless team, Jeff and Natalie, to talk about tips and lessons learned. Uh, but I want to also encourage people, after we give some of our tips and lessons, we're going to open it up for Q&A. Uh, so if you have any questions about organizing a summer solstice or the purpose, I want to encourage you to head down to your Q&A box and start asking questions. Uh, but as for now, I will hand it off to Jeff and Natalie um, to talk about the tips and the lessons learned. Thanks, uh, Catherine and David. So, you know, just a couple of things. We've gone through this as we've gone through the presentation, but actually let me get on the slide. There you go. Um, you know, the tips and lessons learned, this is really guided by the different factors, such as the people that are involved, uh, the goals that you want to achieve, and then the different communities that you're in, and, and really what you want to, um, you know, what you want to get out of it. So the role of the Consumer Advisory Board, this, this event should be driven by the community, community and those with the direct experience. So, you know, involve them as much as possible. This is, um, you know, an event for them, by them. So involve them as much as you can. Uh, in terms of involving people as well, involve, involving providers, uh, staff, board members to be able to show them the kind of work that you're doing. They can actually be involved in an activity. This is a really easy way to get them involved. Um, you also want to highlight specific policies that lead to success and call for greater support for those programs and policies. And this can be done in several ways. You know, in, in New York, we do it with the tabling that we mentioned. We also do it in the actual program when we have our key speakers. Um, you know, you can choose to do that in any way, but this is a really good opportunity to do that. One that I didn't put up here, uh, but one that we think is very important, uh, is utilizing the media as much as possible. So this is a messaging campaign, and an effective tool of public education is uh, utilizing the media to get the stories out and change public per perception of homelessness. So this is a really strong, um, and, and really it's, 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 an, uh, it's an event that should call, that should be able to get people to come out and and here in New York, when we have the legislators, it, it definitely is um, it's an incentive for the media to come out. Uh, we also use using social media to publicize. I mean, this is a no-brainer when it comes to any kind of event. Use as much social media as possible. Uh, when we have our events, we open it up to the public. So really, it's open for anyone that wants to come in, anybody in the space where we're, we're, we're being sponsored. We open it up to any of their clients, any of our clients, anybody that wants to come in, any family members that want to come and be part of the celebration. So really, to spread the word as much as possible. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Catherine for the last part. Um, yeah, so uh, the National Health Care for the Homeless Council really believes in this event. We, we fundamentally agree that we know how to end homelessness for individuals, but we also know how to do that for a society. And the critical supports that have uh, enabled our friends and neighbors to move out of homelessness should be broadly available to everyone. So this is something we want to see these events all over the United States celebrating your community in a way that you want that honors the success of your community and allows you to push for policies that will work for you. So any support that we can provide, we are absolutely happy to help people think through how to organize these events, how to set them up, how to message them, how to promote them. So on the next slide, you will, you will get my contact information. But um, I am more than happy to provide any sort of technical assistance in helping you think through these events. And as a teaser, we also do want to encourage people to attend our National Healthcare for the Homeless Conference. It's going to be this year, June 21st to 24th in D.C. Um, as you notice, June 21st is that first day of the conference. So during our conference, we will be holding a rally. It is going to be uh, featuring the idea of shining a light on housing and healthcare for all. It will be acknowledging the success that we have seen through Medicaid expansion and also acknowledging that in order to see 
uh, house, housing and healthcare as human rights. We need to push for universal solutions, including uh, single payer options and universal health care for all. So we will be celebrating the summer solstice at our rally at the conference on that Friday night, uh, June 23rd. We will have lots of happy suns uh, featuring success stories on them. So if people want to, are coming to the conference and able to, to participate in that rally, we would be delighted to have you come and share your ideas of success stories and help us honor this idea of success through housing and health care. So uh, just as a reminder, if you're, if you're coming to the conference, we hope you celebrate with us. If you will be in your local communities, uh, it is not too late to plan a pilot event. As I mentioned with our event in Baltimore, it was not a large event. Uh, it was something that we put together very much from the grassroots level. And small events can be just as meaningful for community. So starting wherever you can is important. So we would like to encourage folks to consider an event this year on June 21st. Again, if you want any assistance or ideas on how to organize this, I would be happy to help. My contact information is right there. Uh, so we want to thank everyone for listening to what our TA uh, advisors have said, folks who have done this on the ground for a few years. And based on what they have said, I want to just do another quick poll and see how many of you have felt the enthusiasm for this event on the call and see how many of you are planning to organize a summer solstice success celebration in your community this year. So we have the poll opened right now. If you want to take a couple seconds here to let us know if you're planning to celebrate, we would love to hear it. Okay, I will stop it there because we have a majority of people who are saying yes, and I will take that. Um, so from the people who are planning to organize a summer source of success celebration, again, reach out to me if you need any assistance. We are glad to help. Um, at this time, I have no questions in the Q&A box. So if you have any questions you want to ask to our presenters about organizing event or the purpose or some of their experiences, make sure to check the Put those in the Q&A box so we can give any feedback. Um, and I just want to throw it out to David, if you have any other um, tips or lessons learned that, that you want to share at this time with the group. I just want to emphasize your point, Catherine, that even a small event can be extraordinarily emotional, meaningful, and have um, unexpected positive impact. I just reiterate. It was surprisingly effective. Um, everyone is going to love it. Just the idea of having a, a positive event like this where people talk about their own success, their own idea, interpretation of success, or they highlight success, engaging the community, engaging board members, providers, policymakers, and the like. This is something that, that everybody feels good about. It's something that highlights your organization, highlights all the good work that you're doing, and ultimately, most importantly, makes the consumers feel really good and provides a really strong impetus for them to move forward. So I, I just wanted to reiterate and emphasize um, that even a small event is worth doing. Perfect. And I will build on that. I think um, something that we are doing at the conference um, that I think might be an interesting idea for folks our, the National Consumer Advisory Board, which is our local or our national group of consumers who help uh, make sure that the council incorporates consumer feedback and is representing the experience of those on the ground. Uh, during our orientation on the first night, we're holding a little su summer solstice celebration. And during that event, uh, we're going to be creating some of the art that we will use at the rally. So during that event, we're going to have a number of cardboard cutouts of we're going to be asking people to reflect on those uh, signs, what success means to them, what are, how, if they want to share any stories with them, and kind of create some art together that we will use at the rally. So if during your event itself, if you, you may not need to have all the art created as we saw the wonderful art from Miami, 
It could also be an event where you are creating this art together, allowing individuals and the community to define what success means together in that space. So it, it doesn't always have to be something that is very prescribed with a program and people ready to speak. It can also just be a community event where you hold small discussions about what success means to people, what has enabled people to uh, achieve housing, what, what would they like to see in housing, what would success mean to them. You can facilitate a discussion, you can help, uh, create art together. I think there's a number of ways you can do this on a very small scale that's also in more, very engaging that maybe you don't have to plan out an entire program that could be intimidating. And we also have a, another question here that I'm going to throw out. Um, for, uh, we mentioned earlier Homeless Persons Memorial Day. Uh, and so there was a question about what is the contrast between the two events? Uh, so what is the Homeless Persons Memorial Day about and how is that the same or different um, from the Summer Solstice Success Celebration? Uh, so I'm going to throw that to Jeff and Natalie in New York if you want to kind of explain what you think that contrast is. It's a great question. They are two very distinct events. The uh, Memorial Day, which is well established in many places, is an opportunity to, to memorialize people who died while unstably housed in our community during the year. Um, the, it's a, it is in its own right a very emotional event, and it's a great opportunity to provide a memorial for people who often wouldn't have it, to um, provide public education about the tragic outcomes of homelessness, including these incredible health outcomes, and to talk about how we could end this by ending homelessness. The, the, it's sort of a flip, the reverse of it, you know, on the success um, celebration. The one, the one thing I think both of them have very much in common is that they're both great opportunities to uh, get our policy points across to the community. Um, Natalie had mentioned previously about trying to get media coverage. You know, both the Memorial Day program and the um, Summer Success program have incredible visuals that tend to draw uh, the, the news media either for um, video for TV stations or, or online or still photographs for print media. And we, we were able last year after our uh, summer success celebration to, to get a couple of our clients on the biggest talk radio station in New York City for about half an hour. Um, the, the, these are great opportunities to message. And when we talk about destigmatizing and telling stories of success, the, the, in order to be successful at doing that, we've got to be able to reach out beyond our own community. So they're very distinct events, but they're both uh, very emotional events, and they are great opportunities not just to accomplish the direct role of either recognizing success or memorializing people, but also getting our message across about ending homelessness. If I can also talk about the symbolism of the um, two events, the uh, Homeless Persons Memorial Day is typically held on the longest, uh, on the day that has the longest night of the year, the most darkness, because night is particularly significant to folks who are experiencing homelessness. It's, it's the time when most violence happens, when you lose your possessions, and it's very difficult to sleep at night. So it's a very significant time of the year, and, and that's when we do the more somber uh, memorializing people who have passed away. By contrast, very powerful symbolism to talk about success on the day of the year that has the most light. So, so linking those two things together, I, I think, are, are fairly significant. And that's the time when you can talk about all the light in your respective lives, in our respective lives as well. So I, I think what hits a lot of people is the powerful symbolism that we have here in, in terms of the contrast between the longest night when we uh, remember those who have passed away versus the day, the longest day, the day with the most light, where we talk about the success and the lights in our lives. Thanks, David. Um, I want to just ask uh, the two of you, 
or the three of you, I guess, if you want to share anything about any uh, challenges you had in organizing these events, uh, any discussions, or uh, uh, David had mentioned earlier there was some conflict about how they were choosing to uh, organize their event and what the purpose and focus was. Were there any other challenges that you guys faced, and how did you overcome those challenges? Well, there are the challenges that come with organizing any event of this kind. This has a lot of moving parts to it. In our case, because we were doing so many awards, uh, it required a lot of um, preparation well in advance. But um, everybody involved was very enthusiastic, and we certainly did not have problems getting people involved or um, getting support from our organization and uh, our colleagues. I would echo that from um, Jeff. Um, even though ours was a bit narrower in focus um, here in Miami, uh, it still had a fair number of moving parts. Um, you know, there's a fair amount of stress involved in, in the performances. As a matter of fact, it's very interesting. On the 20, on the first one we did, the 2015, our absolutely worst performance where people were missing their cues and 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 not, you know, and, and forgetting their lines. Was the was the actual um, was was the rehearsal right before we did the event was our very worst one. But when we did the event itself, everything clicked perfectly. Everybody hit their cues. They remembered everything, and it just went incredibly well. So you know, it's it's these, these performances. People are much better than what they think they are. Things go very very smoothly. And I, I can tell you, based upon our experience, it'll work out much, much better than what you think. Yeah, thank you both. I think that was very hopeful in uh, the idea that you all had uh, limited challenges, and then the challenges you did have, you were able to easily overcome. Uh, something I would maybe add from Baltimore was uh, a discussion that we had about how we really balance uh, success with trying to make sure that we weren't promoting any idea about blaming an individual for not having overcome their individual experience of homelessness. As we talked about earlier, the point of this event really is to destigmatize homelessness, to uh, honor those who have really overcome these massive systemic barriers, and affirm that we can end homelessness for everyone as a society if we wanted to, if we were able and willing to devote the resources and have the political will to do that. So whenever we were talking about how do you frame this event around success, we wanted to make sure that everything we were doing was talking about the success of the individuals, highlighting the, the resources, the support that they were able to get that enabled them to achieve and maintain housing while making sure that we noted that not everyone else had access to those resources or those supports. So we wanted everything that we had done was really to make sure that we were not framing things as an individual success that, um, or an individual failure, that we were acknowledging people, the, their inner resources, their external resources, what people had to uh, end their individual experiences while also calling for that on a broader scale. So we were talking really about social needs and social causes rather than individual failures. Um, so it looks like we are out of questions. I want to just throw it out to uh, David and Jeff to see if you have any final comments before we close out the webinar. Well, I would just want to say we're, we're really appreciative of this opportunity and we are, uh, you know, it's our dream that, that this would spread across the country and be a great opportunity to frame uh, homelessness and solutions to homelessness in a more uh, acceptable way and to you know, get more and more people involved in the program. We really appreciate that. I agree wholeheartedly with Jeff. If this spreads throughout the country, I think this can have a great impact on our community and on consumers. Okay, well, I will leave the final pitch out there 
um, hearing from folks uh, with expertise in this event, uh, calling you to join us in the Summer Solstice Success Celebration. We hope uh, we may have got more than six people there that are going to invest in this or, uh, event in the future. If you have any questions, again, please reach out to me. I would be happy to help people organize the event. So at this point, I want to thank everyone here for joining the Darkness to Light, Honoring Success and Resilience uh, webinar produced by the National Health Care for the Homeless Council. This webinar will be archived on our website, www.nhchc.org, within 72 hours. A link of the archived webinar will be mailed will be emailed once it is posted to our website. Questions that presenters were unable to respond to will be addressed via email if possible. At the close of this webinar, an online survey to evaluate this webinar will automatically open in your web browser. Please complete it so that we are able to improve your